Landfills are crazy and beautiful and they have this wonderful sickly sweet methane smell but they're also hugely inspiring because when I saw all of this material even though it made me angry it also inspired me to to think okay these are all solvable problems. What people expect is okay it's going to be bin bags, it's going to be filled with household waste, you know some food, some nappies, some tennis rackets, things like that. But what people really aren't prepared for and what I wasn't prepared for were these mono industrial wastes that were arriving. So sometimes you would get three trucks in a row with one single clean material in it. And whenever you see that you know come on there is a better way for this to happen. We have to think of all of our resources as absolutely unbelievably precious and in use. And it's that connection to things that I think we've lost in a disposable society. My name's Cressy Wessling. I'm the co-founder of Elvis and Cressy. And it's a business that we started in 2005 when we discovered that London's damaged, decommissioned fire hoses were going to landfill and thought really, this is a beautiful, heroic material. It can't die like this. We do three things. We rescue materials, we transform those materials, and then we give half of the money away. And we do this across 15 different materials that we collect. Obviously, we started with fire hose, but we have always been looking for new and interesting wastes, and we will always continue to look for new and interesting wastes. There are a lot of materials that we encounter that we think, you know, it might just be us. We might be the people to, to solve this problem. And then I just can't let it go. Then I have to find out everything about it. What is it made from? Where was it made? How much is there? Why are people throwing it away to begin with? What, what are the challenges associated with it? And, and how can we overcome those? We're getting close to the 200 ton mark of material that we've rescued. And every year the amount of material we rescue goes up and every year the, you know, the amount of our donations go up. We've definitely donated over 100,000 pounds now. A lot of people will talk about uh, their mentors and their heroes, and for me, uh, my grandmother was, was absolutely all of those things. Her whole world view was that if you can solve a problem, you must solve it. So I think she said to me once, and probably never thought about it again, she said, if you are capable, you're responsible. And I think about that every day. We are a B Corp, we're a social enterprise. We give 50% of our profits away. We have a, a well-paid workforce. Everyone is treated very well. We don't use toxic glues. We make all of our own packaging from waste as well. We consider everything that we do to be something that can be improved upon and something that can be made better for people and for the environment. I think most of the time we just think it's unreal that this has happened. You know, of course there's an element of luck in it and of course we work really, really hard, but it's still extraordinary to me that we had this crazy idea and somehow now it's got its own factory. <laughs> I find that really, really wild and I don't think I will ever really be able to step back from that. Um, you know, I, I, I'm always going to be slightly awed by, by the fact that it's still happening.